Stoneman and Robson's record partnership puts Middlesex on top. Both these sides head into their second round matches of the divisional stage off the back of tight first games, but they'd found different fortunes. Sussex beaten away at Worcestershire, while Middlesex's bowlers had done the job and beaten Derbyshire at Lords. Middlesex won the toss and took their chance to bat under the baking late summer sun, and it proved to be the correct choice. Stoneman and Robson off to a rollicking start, their approach more akin to a one-day innings than a four-day one, 50 runs coming off just 68 balls. There was little assistance for the bowlers, and Middlesex filled their boots, soon thinking about three figures, and each opener closing in on 50. Robson was the first to get there, up to his 50 with his seventh four of the innings, and in the process, ticked the score up past 100. Stoneman joined him, his 50 coming from one fewer delivery. Carson heaved over the leg side for four to get there. And they were still there at the end of the session. A great one for Middlesex, left them 134 for none at lunch. The afternoon session brought more of the same for the visitors. Robson and Stoneman back to their work, Sussex on the end of a bit of an assault from the pair. Try as they might, the hosts couldn't dislodge the openers, 150 runs disappearing into the rearview mirror, and 200 now firmly in their sights. And they'd get there, still together. The mark reached off 290 balls, and now both were searching for their hundreds. Stoneman got his with a boundary off Rawlins, 149 balls taken to reach the mark, a good way for the former Surrey man to bounce back from his difficult start last week. Robson joined him. Four down to third man took him to his century off 161 deliveries. And the Middlesex opening pair breezed past 250. They'd soon be looking for 300 unbeaten. Another session came and went without a wicket for Sussex. The bowlers finally taken out of the firing line with the score 286 for none. The respite would be brief. Robson and Stoneman returned refreshed and the pattern resumed. Once again, there were milestones on offer. 300 on the board for Middlesex soon after they were back out there. Robson then went to his 150, scored off 206 balls with 19 fours. He added more, taking the score towards 350. And then Stoneman joined him on 150. His reached off 216 balls, Sussex shoulders slumping even further. Together they went on to put up 350 for the first wicket in 460 balls, as dominant a performance as was possible to get on day one here in Hove. When Stoneman found a single through point off Crocom, history had been made. A new highest first wicket partnership for Middlesex, eclipsing that of Messrs Gatting and Langer's stand of 372 way back in 1998. It would finish on 376, Sussex finally finding a way to remove Stoneman caught behind off Crocom for 174, a majestic innings over, but it would never be forgotten. And having spent all day watching and waiting to bat, Eskenazi's stay lasted only 21 balls, out for four, when he was caught behind off Hunt. They were up to 400 with the final action of the day, one that had given Middlesex all the cards. You'll be hard pressed to find an opening stand quite as scintillating as that of Robson and Stoneman's, and with eight wickets in hand, the sky is the limit for the visitors on day two.